There we are. All right, the recording started. Excellent. Thank you, Beth, and happy Friday, everyone. Um, let me share my camera just for a little bit. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, last Friday of every month, we do a monthly webinar here at Pioneer V1. Uh, happy to present today our topic of SAP Business One transformation. And we have gathered multiple experts to uh, help us understand how Business One handle sales stocks out of the box and um, what are the extension of Avalara that is available that really uh, enhance that uh, functionality. Uh, I'm thrilled to have here today with me uh, my partner in crime, Elizabeth Kem, who will walk us through uh, the, the sales tax features available in SAP out of the box. Um, and we have here also our partner at Avalara, uh, Cameron uh, Murphy and Wendy, who will walk us through the Avalara platform and some other related uh, tax uh, compliance uh, elements. So with that being said, uh, let's view our objectives. Uh, we're going to provide you today the tools to understanding the tax automation available out of the box with SAP Business One and to help you understand when do you need, um, you know, just the out of the box functionality and when, um, you know, an add-on or Avalara add-on is uh, needed. Um, so we look forward to um, show that to you. Uh, in, of course, a live demo of SAP Business One. Um, and uh, all the features we're going to show today is relevant to any flavor of SAP Business One, whether you are on HANA or on SQL. Uh, it's all, uh, you know, same functionality. Um, I think some functionality is available from to above, so, but we are going to look at, you know, one of the latest versions. Um, Agenda for today is uh, we're going to talk about sales mode setup, how it works in SAP without any add-ons or without any extension. Uh, we're going to look at. Lauren, you are a, a little tiny bit choppy, so I'm going to try to turn off camera and then um, maybe that will help the audio a little. Sorry about the interruption. Sounds good. Thank you, Beth. Is that better? Yeah, it sounds better. Perfect. All right. Thank you. So we're going to talk about sales tax setup and how to do uh, sales tax uh, out of the box in SAP Business One. We're going to get the more advanced uh, determination and different uh, automation you can set up SAP so you don't have to set up every business partners or every item with, with the relevant determination. Um, and then we're going to look at a feature that came in two versions of SAP Business One called Tax as a Service. Um, and look at some of the reporting available out of the box for sales tax. And then we'll transition into the Avalara connector and what additional functionality that provides. And the Avalara team also going to provide us some information about the COVID effects and how it uh, related to sales tax reporting and sales tax uh, payment to, to uh, authorities. Uh, of course, we're going to look at some documentation of everything we uh, discussed in the Q&A. This session is recorded and as always, we're gonna make it visible for you um, in, the next, uh, in the next week or so. Wonderful, Oren. So thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, at this point, as always, we're going to take it into our live demo. So, um, you know, really first and foremost, like Oren said, we wanna talk about tax codes in SAP and the most uh, kind of the most basic of setups that you can have to handle tax codes in SAP. And so in order to do that, first we need to look at each of the setup pieces that lead to how tax is determined on documents. And first, one of those being on the business partner master data screen. So on this business partner master data, there are two separate areas that we need to define to make sure that our sales tax codes are being uh, address, you know, in our documents in SAP. So the first one of those being on the addresses tab. Um, here under our ship to address, we have an area where we can define the tax code. So this is just letting us define a specific tax code per ship to location. The other area on the business partner master data that we want to look into is here under the accounting tab. 
if we go to our taxes tab, this is where we're able to define if this partner, this business partner is tax liable or tax exempt, you know, a, uh, an associated exemption number there. So these are really our two places on our business partner master data that are important to define a tax code. So here in this case, all we have to do is click, add that tax code and update our business partner. The other area that's important for you know, the setup piece of this is in the item master data. So if we go ahead and look at our first item here, we can see that there's just a simple checkbox here that determines if this item will be tax liable or not. And so really those three pieces you know, are our only setup pieces uh, in determining the tax liability on documents. So just with that, just with those three basic things, we can now go into a sales order and go ahead and select this business partner. We can go ahead and select that item that we just looked at and determine our tax status. So here, you notice that it pulled in that default tax code from the business partner. Uh, however, you can see, and you know, maybe for those of us that are already on SAP Business One um, or are already you know, using taxes in this way, uh, you might not have this field visible, so feel free to make that field visible and it'll give you some insight here. But what we see is that the tax code is being pulled in, but this item is not tax liable. And we can look, you know, back on our, our item master setup and verify it's not tax liable. So on the document, this is able to be changed on the fly. So it comes in with its default, but we are able to define that tax liability per line. And as you can see in this bottom right corner here, when we change it to tax liable, it does calculate taxes. And then of course, when we change it back to its default, it's not going to calculate those taxes. So that is, you know, just the most kind of basic of setup areas on, um, on our tax codes for our sales documents. We can look at into the actual setup to see what's, you know, what's going on in here. So this sales tax code setup, as you might have seen, you know, where we selected on the business partner, we have a handful of options um, of, of preset ones that we've added to this system. And you can see here, you know, maybe this is kind of a more, um, more specially defined one or granular sales tax code than the one we were just looking at. So for instance, this AZ was just had, you know, the AZ tax code defined for the state. Uh, we can get more granular in our tax code setup and have specific taxes for the state, county and specific city. Uh, and then we can also define here if that if we are going to be charging sales tax on freight or not. And then, you know, other kind of setup here, we just have the specific rates. And then, of course, it calculates this standard overall tax rate there. So beyond and that, so oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, just one word about sales taxes. Uh, so this is the one method to manage uh, taxes out of the box in SAP Business One. It's really to define those sales tax one by one. Uh, it's also uploadable, so we can upload also all the relevant sales tax available. But that's kind of a more manual way. Um, you know, it's 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 good for some companies that do in manufacturing, right? So you may need to sell, to charge sales tax within the the current state but in all other states. So it makes sense just to create, to sell, you know, tax codes and that's it. Um, we're gonna look at more complicated scenarios down the road uh, where you have many sales tax and that, uh, you know, in those cases, you may need to use uh, tax as a service or a Valaro connector. We're gonna look at that down the road. Beautiful, thanks, Oren. And, and to add on to that point, this is, uh, whether you do it manually by typing it in or whether you do it by upload, this specific feature that I'm showing um, has to be updated manually, where as we move on to tax as a service, those tax rates are updated automatically and the updates are pushed to SAP. So otherwise, that's the sales side of it on this basic setup. Uh, the one thing I did want to mention is that taxes on the purchasing side, I know we looked at these setups for the sales side. Um, on the purchasing side, the tax that is going to be used for purchasing documents, so purchase order, invoice, all that good kind of stuff, that is coming from the warehouse default. So you can look at this item, and you know this item in particular does have a default warehouse. 
and it has that warehouse has a default tax code. So then as we go over to our purchasing documents, we're able to purchase this, grab that item, and then you'll see that exempt tax code is coming in there. So just a quick note on the purchasing side of that. Beyond this basic sales tax definition, we also do have something out of the box in SAP called tax code determination. So to find that, we go under administration, setup, financials, taxes, and then there's tax code determination. You can also search for it in this bar up here. That's generally how I search for everything. But um, there's our, so here's our tax code determination. And right now, uh, we just have a very basic setup here as an example for the webinar, but you can get um, you know, much more robust in your setup depending on the sales tax rules for your business. So specifically, we can choose document types here, whether they be item or service documents. In this case, we've just uh, chosen items. You can choose whether you want this rule to be applicable to sales or purchase, and then you can start to choose conditions. So, um, you know, really what this does in a nutshell is, is provide those, or the ability to create these rules um, for your taxes. So for instance, uh, to go off of, you know, the example Oren was just saying, you may be doing manufacturing and in the state of Arizona, you do have to charge Arizona taxes, but if you're shipping out of state, that's tax exempt. So a simple setup like this will really save you from going into each specific business partner and, you know, trying to configure the setup so that you know the specific ship twos are you know have these specific uh, tax codes, and it will really reduce that you know that manual work there by setting up these governing rules. Uh, one thing that I will note is that if you do add some rules that are are redundant, or if you have two identical rules, uh, the document will fall, or the tax code determination will follow the first one that it sees. So if those rules overlap and the first line tax code is Arizona, it will pull that Arizona tax code. So just as you're working on setting it up, you know, feel free to reach out to us and, and um, you know, we're happy to look and set up those rules with you. And of course, just to mention, as we're going through this process uh, or uh, this demo, feel free to add any questions that you have in the chat, uh, the GoToMeeting chat, and we can answer it as we go. Otherwise, if we don't have any questions on this, I will move on to uh, our next feature, which comes out of the box with SAP called Tax as a Service. So what Tax as a Service provides, basically it, it's um, providing that same functionality to calculate your sales and purchase tax, but it does it in an automated way. So SAP can you know, reach out to the tax hub and return the, the appropriate tax straight away on your document. So to find that, we'll open the administration menu, go to system initialization, company details, and our accounting data tab. So you can see at the bottom here, I do have this sale, this SAP localization tax service hub turned on. Um, for right now, we, you know, you can say do not use, that'll remove everything, or we can say, we just wanna do it for sales or sales and purchasing. This information should auto default, but let us know if you, you know, need any help setting that up and we're happy to do so. So once this setup is here, um, it's, it's going to auto calculate and pull in the taxes based on the information that's on your marketing documents. So we can go ahead and open up a sales order. We'll create a new one. And actually, let me jump into our business partner master data first. So before we create that sales order, we do have just one small uh, setup piece here, which is when you go into your business partner master data, once you turn uh, this tax as a service on, we have this configuration here that says, is it enabled or is it not for this specific business partnership too? And so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention, so once you set up the tax as a service enabled in the company, every new ship to uh, basically will have that default. So if you want, don't want 
the tax to to be automatically uh, you could change it to no but the default will be yes yes absolutely wonderful and and um just to piggyback off of that if you do want to you know remove them kind of in mass and you have a list that you want to reset that default um we can do that as as a mass upload so here once you have tax as a service enabled this is going to overwrite this can you know whatever you have set here for your tax code uh, the tax as a service takes precedence so we can go ahead and see that um, let's see we have it maybe for our milwaukee location so in this same business partner we had you know this arizona location but now we also have this milwaukee location and we have some basic information about our zip code state county but let's say we really are not you know, 100% sure about what the taxes are there. And truthfully, if we have tax as a service, we don't need to spend that time, you know, retrieving the sales tax information. So now we've pulled in our business partner. We'll go to the, the logistics tab and I actually wanna pull for this Milwaukee location. And then we'll add our same item. And now you'll notice that it generated this new tax code here. So we can go drill in and look at our tax code and let me fit that a little bit better. So we can drill in and look at our tax code and now SAP has gone to the tax hub and actually based on the address that's on the sales order, that Milwaukee address, it is now defined and pulled in what the tax code or tax rates are for the state, county and city, any relevant taxes there and added this as a new tax code in SAP. So it really is going to help you uh, kind of reduce the administrative burden of having to update your taxes or spend so much time, you know, making sure that you are, are tax compliant. And, um, you know, it's going to help you fulfill those, those legal requirements there as well. So there are a few limitations of this um, that I just have to, you know, I just want to share. So it does only work with domestic U.S. business partners, uh, not your business partners that are outside of the U.S. Uh, it is the other the other kind of one thing there is that it does need a web connection to function because it does have to talk to the tax hub. So if you're planning to use this, um, you know, you do have to have that web connection. Uh, so, otherwise... Excellent. Oh, go for it, Aaron. We have a question, Beth, um, on the chat. Um, let me read it out loud. Or maybe you want to do that because you like to read those. I, I do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, Sherry, thanks for the question. So, Sherry's asking, on the purchasing side, uh, she has a supplier like Uline that they don't pay taxes for any materials that, that she buys that go into their product, uh, but she also buys materials from them that are more office supplies. So do I need to leave the accounting slash tax tab as liable or should I set it as exempt? So, yeah, so that's a good question, Sherry. And, and normally on the purchasing side, you don't really put uh, tax codes, right? So one thing you could do is first make the vendor is exempt. So it doesn't even post on the journal entry, you know, $0 uh, sales tax. Um, and then on the purchasing document, I would always have it as exempt, unless if there is something very unique, um, because normally the invoices you get from your vendors already included the taxes and things of that nature. Um, so, so you don't have to manage that uh, separately. Um, I hope it answered your question, but please let me know if not. Yes, thank you. Awesome. Wonderful. So any other questions uh, from the audience before we move on? Okay, otherwise there is just one last thing um, that I wanted to cover, which is the sales tax jurisdiction report. So let's open. Hmm. 
Or do you know off the top of your head, sorry, where that report is? For some reason, I'm not finding it on here. There we go. Thank you. All right, perfect. So this is our tax report or tax jurisdictions report. Um, so in this case, we are able to pull in kind of our, um, our, our tax report for each of those. In this case, you know, we're looking at either states or they may be, you know, special jurisdictions or counties. We can go ahead and run that report. And now we have information here telling us our tax rate for each of these jurisdictions, any taxable amounts on our books here, um, as well as you know our, our total tax amount there. Um, this is kind of expandable here, so we can jump in. Um, for instance, there we go, Pennsylvania has a little bit more data here in the system. So we can expand or collapse this and any relevant, um, you know, taxes on documents will be available here in the source document. So from here, we're able to drill in with this golden arrow and then actually see, you know, the relevant document here, doc total and the tax that was calculated. Right. And, and that report could be generated in so many different ways. So it's one report that actually included multiple reports because you can run it either by jurisdiction or you can run it by your specific tax codes that you set up. So this is where you see all the tax codes uh, that were set up. And um, in addition, you could uh, determine if you want to run it for the AR or for the AP and kind of uh, help you choose, you know, the, the different transactions that are going to be included. So if you run it here by tax codes, now we see only the re relevant tax codes. And if we have transactions, you know, financial transaction, not, not the sales order, that uh, again, show us those details. And uh, that also have a couple of uh, design reports, not not amazingly nice, but, but it, it does allow us to kind of customize or to change them uh, if needed. Wonderful. Thanks so much for, for that, Oren. So any other questions from our audience before we go ahead and, and turn it over to Avalara? All right. Excellent. Thank you very much, Beth. So just kind of a sub summary on what we went through. We went through uh, so far on SAP tax codes and how to define them even manually. We went through the tax code determination, how to automate in different transactions, those uh, sales tax codes. Um, then the second element we looked at is tax as a service, which is much more automated, um, and as well as we looked at the different uh, reports available out of the box. So everything we showed now comes with your SAP Business One out of the box. Um, the tax as a service come from version 9.2, I believe, PL6. Um, so all of that is available for you out of the box with SAP Business One. What we're going to go through now is uh, a, an add-on provided by Avalara. Avalara, uh, I'll let them introduce themselves and, and let you know, you know what they do and probably everybody here on the call understand Avalara. Um, so um, this is an extension for SAP Business One. Uh, and it lives within SAP Business One and also outside. But with that being said, and without further ado, I'm very happy to introduce you with uh, Wendy. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I know uh, sales tax is not everyone's uh, favorite thing to spend an hour talking about, so I appreciate y'all joining us. Uh, actually, I think Cameron is going to take us through a couple slides, and then we are going to look at um, how the Avalara plug in add in into um, SAP B1 uh, will help take kind of take what we just saw what Elizabeth was showing us and kind of jump off to the next level. Yeah, Beautiful. that's perfect. And Wendy, do you want yeah, to share Wendy, the screen though? Is it not sharing? It shows yeah, me that I it's sharing. It. There's a green box around it. Yep, I do see yeah. why do companies outsource tax. I got you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we got you, Wendy. If you don't mind, um, since you have the controls, uh, just advancing the slides yep. when I give you the, the heads up. But uh, oh, thank you so much, um, Oren and Beth, for going through that and uh, handing it over to us. My name is Cameron, and for everyone that 
uh, carved out some time to join with us today. I appreciate that as well. I am a strategic alliance manager at Avalara, and I manage our partnership with Pioneer B1 and the team there. I appreciate the opportunity to highlight some of our features today, and I think Wendy will take a little deeper dive on uh, exactly kind of how that all works and, and uh, go from there. So, uh, Avalara was founded in 2004. Uh, we have a little more than 30,000 uh, current active customers. And um, we have eight offices here in the United States domestically and eight globally. So full um, global coverage on uh, any kind of transactional tax, whether it's sales tax, use tax, uh, expanding out to that tax and things like that. So um, for companies that uh, want a solution uh, or maybe uh, an automated piece instead of relying on a heavily manual process or uh, really kind of setting it and forgetting that piece of it to focus on some of the revenue generating pieces of the business, um, that's really where we come in to have those discussions to see how we can help. So for today, um, why is sales tax and the revenue that states get uh, important to them? So when you can think of, you know, infrastructure, roadways, things that states pay for and the federal government pays for, where does that revenue come from? Um, and about 47% of states rely on sales tax as part of the revenue. So it's definitely something that is very important and something that the states rely heavily on and also inspect uh, what they expect out of businesses as far as uh, the calculation, what is collected and remitted to the state. So um, you can see here in a report from Aberdeen and Wakefield, uh, businesses that were polled were asked the question, why do you outsource and how comfortable or confident do you feel that if someone came by, came on site and knocked on the door and said, hey, can we pull this invoice with these SKUs and see what was actually calculated? Were there products that were exempt or not exempt? What rates uh, were calculated? What was collected and remitted to us? We think that there may be an error or we just kind of want to inspect what we expect. About three fourths of them or 75% of those businesses feel that uh, an auditor is likely to find mistakes. Um, and only 25% uh, feel that they are not likely to find mistakes. But I can pretty much rest assured that about 100% of those businesses are not 100% confident that they're in secure and compliant environment. So um, really kind of outsourcing that piece of it is something that just becomes um, you know, an option for businesses to explore. And that's really where Avalara comes in. Um, you know, sales tax compliance is really um, not a uh, an option for businesses. And a lot of times it, uh, the burden falls solely on the business to provide that information. So uh, you can see here uh, that businesses feel that having an employee or a group of employees, a team, manage that piece of it, researching the rates, uh, what should be calculated, really uh, cost them per year about 67000 to upwards of $400,000. So uh, it's definitely something that is, is very... Um, you know, uh, a lot of resources go into to keep it manual. Uh, and it's something, again, that states are really looking for to collect, uh, you know, the 47% of the revenue they rely on. Um, Wendy, next slide, please. Thank you. So as far as our SaaS solution, so everything's up in the cloud. Uh, it is 100% um, in the cloud, done in real time. You can think of your either resource planning tool, your ERP, any kind of point of system, shopping cart, e-com, retail. Um, we have the pre-written language, the integration that goes right into SAP B1. Uh, what happens at that point is anytime there's an invoice and there's a transactional tax, whether it's sales or use tax, there's a sales tax calculation. Uh, it, it goes up into uh, the cloud, into the product and solution set, over to Avatax. It looks at where pieces are moving, where they're coming from. It swings over and looks at CERT Capture. So CERT Capture is our document management for any exemptions. So different products, there's about 1,400 different product exemption rules of products that are either taxable or not taxable based on different rules. So it looks over for any kind of exemptions to products. Then it goes ahead and does the calculation and sends it back into SAP B1. Uh, at that point, it's all housed within um, the solution. So when you go from your collection to actual uh, remittance and filing, um, we have all the documentation there and those um, are the prepping and filing is done and then the returns are managed and sent over to the, uh, the government or the municipality at the state or federal level. So um, at any point, if you want, and I think Wendy's gonna showcase a little bit more of kind of how we do that, 
Um, we have uh, obviously more information available on, on our SaaS solution and how the, all of that different works within uh, with SAP V1. So Wendy, next slide. So as far as Avalara and SAP V1, we have over 700 different integrations, which we have pre-written language for. SAP V1 is one of the, uh, the main or core integrations that we deal with uh, in our ecosystem every day and every year. Um, here are some of the key bullet points uh, as far as our integration to SAP V1. Uh, I don't feel the need to just read them verbatim, but I think there are definitely a, a few highlights that kind of stand out for me. And, um, you know, two real standouts are just kind of getting started. So, um, you know, taking that first step, having the conversation, and once we decide to go with Avalara in our solution, uh, you know, getting started is very easily. So having that uh, pre-built connection allows for a seamless interaction into SAP V1. Uh, the I IT at most instances is either non-existent or very, very light. Uh, so it is something that can get up and running um, pretty quickly versus a long drawn out project of, of trying to get uh, Avatax integrated into SAP V1. Um, and then once it is integra uh, integrated or you are using Avatax, uh, you really are able now to leave the updates to us. So um, if you can think of having to go back and actually spending time of doing research and, and looking at tax rates and uploading tables and things, uh, having a SaaS solution now, it's all done in real time. So anytime there's any product exemption rules that change, there's different jurisdictional rates that change, uh, Avatax is up to date with that and we will go ahead and make those calculations in real time. Uh, again, versus having to rely on a heavily manual process. So um, you can see here uh, with some of the other ones uh, as far as detailed reporting, so just being audit ready, uh, having access to reports, different periods of reconciliation and being able to pull invoices and transactional tax amounts, um, and then also getting a leg up on prepping and filing. And then of course, having reliable, accurate uh, calculations, knowing that uh, you are compliant in an automated piece that the tool is doing the work for you. Um, and then you can feel good about your tax software. A uh, lot of different choices for uh, people that we have discussions with to entertain. Um, we have a very good uh, organization as far as just learning about your environment, what are some of your requirements and really where you want to get to. Uh, those discussions happen every day. And of course, we would love to have uh, any kind of uh, discussion with you for, for the questions that you have for our integration to SAP V1. And of course, Pioneer B1 is a great partner of ours to uh, also reach out to to start that uh, initial conversation or get some more information as well. Um, so really kind of with that piece of it, as far as going through a little bit on, um, you know, about Avalara, just kind of uh, where we are currently and how we can help with SAP V1 as far as automating your sales tax calculations and then also uh, collecting, remitting and, and filing. Uh, I'm going to Turn it over now to a senior solution engineer of ours. Her name is Wendy Leonard. Uh, you heard her uh, at, the, at the forefront of this. She's going to go a little bit deeper into the uh, the integration uh, via her piece. So, Wendy, over to you. Absolutely. So, hey, everybody. Thanks again. Um, I will say that um, as Oren was talking at the beginning, my access to um, to the B1 integration is via a remote desktop and it kicked me off as he was talking. I've been trying to get on. I will continue to try and get on, but the key thing is I was going to pick up from where uh, we were looking inside of B1. Um, I will. I was going to pick up from there at first and then come move over to Avatax and kind of the end of it and I'll kind of do it in a little bit of a reverse order. So the key is that if you're using Avatax, you will have a little uh, integration. So instead of using uh, either of the versions that Elizabeth was showing us, what you'll use is it's called an external option that they have inside of the configurations to set your tax settings. And that means you're able to use the Avatax version. And in C, you will get an Avatax site. Your experience inside of SAP V1 will be very much the same as if you were using the tax as a service. It's going to pick jurisdictions for you, so you're not going to have to manually pick those. And it's going to pick it based on actually a latitude and longitude. So it's actually going to define that. And let's see if it's let me in my desktop. Uh, no, I don't want to make changes. <gasps> it's going to let me back in now, I think. OK, yay.
All right. Yay, I'm glad that came back. So we'll start again, kind of uh, picking off what we've already seen, leaving off where we were and picking up with um, just starting in a sales order, which we were looking at. We'll pick our customer. And just look at those customer details. So as we saw, the two key places that we would be picking that tax code in the customer card, and then if we'll come down, we can see when you've enabled the Avatax portion of it, that external taxability, the tax code converts to Avatax. So there's no selecting of tax code inside of this environment at all. There's a configuration default that uh, allows you to default that to Avatax. And so it, um, it's just going to say that. And when you're using the Avatax configuration, as I was mentioning, it really does an address level um, not just zip code base, not just zip code four, but it converts things to a lat long. It's gonna take that exact address and convert it so that we literally Avalara drop a pinpoint to identify where it is, which that's what allows us to give that accuracy guarantee is um, we're not just kind of sure what sort of jurisdictions that particular address is in, we're absolutely sure. Um, and we're able to um, also help facilitate because there's a concept of an address validation. And that is is where we're able to, and we can look at any of the different addresses, each of those it's going to provide a lat long that's you know up from there. And then address validation is what helps us get so accurate on that. You can either, it also helps improve some of your addresses in here as well. So if your information that you have, also when SAP B1, if you're using those other mechanisms, either you're doing it manually and users of yours are having to establish which tax code any given customer address is in. The tax as a service um, identifies based on the information that you've provided, but when you're using this integration in, it actually calls out and is able to improve on and um, it, you know, fix a lot of the details you've got with your addresses. So I had modified the zip code to 9999 when I did the address validation. It just replaced it with the far more accurate zip code plus a zip plus four plus adding the lane or the northeast or all those different pieces. Um, you can have this address validation functionality executed in a couple different ways. So when you put Avatax in place, there's going to be some configurations and some settings and you're able to update uh, in the system. And then there's lots of different options. If you come over here to this address uh, setting, you can say ask for a confirmation with address validation. So I don't have that enabled. Basically, if um, I ask for address validation and it has a better one, it just replaces it here. And then I can save it or not save it. Um, I could have it have a pop-up that says, hey, do you want to replace it with the information? There's a lot of controls and configurations with the settings inside of the Avatax integration that allows you to, um, to have this the most effective way for your users to use it and your tax department um, gets to decide what they want standard operating procedure to be from there. Also, you can see that there is a bulk validator. So if you'd like to, you're able to in, in mass when you come on board and use the Avatax integration, you can go ahead and do all of your addresses to do a validation, which would do that tweaking. It's got a nice side um, side impact of getting more accurate addresses. So if you're ever getting any kind of those penalties or um, nastograms from your common carrier that the address uh, wasn't exactly correct, um, using the address validation feature helps uh, with that as well. And again, based on your configurations and how you have it set up, um, can control how you want those views to be. If you'd like it to just validate in the background and not have a button here, you can suppress the button and have, uh, again, that flow and standard operating procedure you want. But the key is there will be no selecting of those tax codes. That's completely automated. Uh, and as well, uh, just like we were looking over here in the tax tab, you'll want, of course, it to show tax libel. So even customers that have exemptions in place in this case will always just be tax liable because the key here is you're tying in Avatax, which is a tax engine. So the tax engine should be making the decision. So as far as B1 is, is, is aware, all your customers are going to be taxable and all of your uh, items are taxable. It doesn't mean there will be tax. It means that you're letting Avatax make those decisions. And that's what you're going to, um, and that's what, you know, having Avatax here is going to identify.
already. So that's in the, um, the customer card. Again, it's very much the same experience if you're using text as a service. It's just a little bit more accurate and there's a lot more reporting and ease behind the scenes around that. But from a user and usability perspective, not much changes for your experience there. Okay. So then we'll go back to our sales order and we'll add an item to it. Pick an item. Uh, the Avatax tax code populates in there just like uh, we expected it to. I'm going to add a date so that I can get that. So, and now you'll see at the bottom here, there's a preview tax. So, if I'd like to preview and see what the tax on this would be, yes, I want to use that delivery date. It's calling out to Avatax and it's pulling the information back into the system for what the tax on that would necessarily be. And then I can always update on that if I've got an additional quantity. I can also modify and see the address that's being used. So in this case, I can pull in and get the tax for what that address in New York would be. So it's $133.13. If I modify and say, you know what, they actually want this ship to the West Coast. It again, yes, I do. Uh, it again uses Avatax, because of course that's what was uh, populated there. And I can ask for my preview and it'll pull in and say, oh, well, if it's going to that address in California that we had corrected the zip code on, then it's $108.75. And then it's got all of the details if there's ever a need to um, see what was passed over or passed back for troubleshooting purposes. All of those details are behind the scenes that you can have access to, but really the summary information is what's going on for there. So I've got my tax that's around that. I can actually add, which is of course I'm adding that as a sales order. It's calling through and if I were to go back to my sales order that I just had, it'll show me the document that I was looking at. Okay, text that's applied in there. I could always push that through and process from there. Now we wanna look at also the items. And here's where we're gonna look at some user-defined uh, user field. Uh, because the other way that we could do this, as we saw up front, is we could either say each item is liable or not liable, right? So this, again, all items are going to say tax liable here. So we could either go through item by item, this is liable, this is not, that doesn't account for customers and things like that. If we want more um, larger rules, we could have the where we're setting, we're literally kind of setting rules and rules and rules. Again, when you're using Avatax, Avatax is making those decisions. You're not setting rules. You don't need to decide, is this item taxable for this particular customer? That tax decision calling into Avatax is making that full contextual decision. What you need to do is simply identify what the item, the good or service on your invoices in these cards, what they are. So here this is, it's a different, it says tax code, but this is an Avatax tax code, which is basically a goods and service code. This P and zeros indicates exactly what this item is in an Avalara, Avalara speak, basically. So if it's software, some states are going to say software is completely not taxable, not because the customer is not taxable, but because software is not in that state. Um, but other states say that exact same tax, you know, software is taxable. You're not having to need to know which states treat software which ways, which straight, uh, states will treat medical devices in a certain way, freight in a certain way. All you're needing to know is it's a medical device, it's freight, it's, um, you know, software as a service, whatever it might be, and pick the corresponding code that ties in. So as it's passing through and as it was getting that tax decision in the invoicing, in the sales order, whatever it might be, it's passing a contextual 
a bundle of information. That was what we saw with all that little code stuff that we could use to troubleshoot. That bundle of information. Because Avatax goes through logic for every single tax that it returns. It goes through, and first and foremost, it says, do you even have Nexus, a sales tax obligation, with the addresses that are involved? That was this logistics piece of it. It's passing through the addresses that are involved. And it's identifying and passing it through to Avatax, and Avatax is then deciding with based on those addresses, do you even have Nexus as an organization there? If so, then it looks to see, well, does your customer have an exemption there for that particular one? If so, zero tax, right? If no Nexus, zero tax, and it returns that back. Uh, liquidity split to, to your invoicing or sales order. If you have Nexus, but your customer has an exemption certificate, it provides zero tax back to the sales order or invoice. If your customer doesn't have an exemption certificate, but that particular line item is not taxable in that particular jurisdiction, it passes back zero tax for that piece of it. So it goes through this logic tree and it does it in that sub-second uh, mechanism and sends it back. And that's how Avatax can provide that, that accuracy that we've got going on because it's doing all of those different pieces, not just rules that you're putting in place or that your individual users are making those different decisions. Again, you're simply making sure you've got addresses in the system that you can use the Avatax mechanism to make more accurate, and you're identifying the code that's being used to identify those particular items. And then from there, it's simply um, you can use the standard you know, mechanism when you add an item it's going to first do the draft and then it's going to post the item that moves over to Avatax. And the system does understand the integration that was written so that um, B1 is speaking to Avatax, tells it at each step in the way what type of tax query it is. So when I was doing a sales order query into Avatax, Avatax knew that sales orders aren't real, you know, I want to be completely accurate on the tax front. But this is not something that's going to move over for potential sales tax liability because a sales order isn't a finalized invoice. When I post my AR invoice, then when I'm querying Avatax that final time for a final decision, because it might change addresses, it might change quantities, it might change all those different components. But when it finalizes and posts, it moves to Avatax and says, now it is sales tax final. And it would come over to Avatax and let us know. So the other thing I want to point out here is that in the configurations, there's a tie-in to CERT Capture. And as Cameron was saying at the top, and as I mentioned, um, that it is a contextual decision. And a lot of that depends on whether this particular customer has an exemption certificate. And not just a certificate, but is it a certificate that covers that particular ship to location? Because as I bounce back and forth between my New York and my California, if the customer was reselling items in California, but their headquarters was in New York and they consumed them there, then California would be exempt, but North Carolina, excuse me, New York wouldn't. And so that's going to be managed in CERT Capture. And you've got a window into that whole exemption management piece of it from your environment in SAP B1. So your users don't have to learn to use another application, even though that's what's running in the background. So you can actually, from, from here, kick off communication using the CERT Capture tool to send emails directly to your customer, make placeholders say this customer says they're going to provide certificates if they haven't yet. So this placeholder said that the system can send communication, can keep people updated, do some automated reporting around that. So there's a lot of pieces in there. And then we're going to look at what um, the reporting piece is then going to come out of the Avalara engine, which we're going to look at. But I do want to uh, point out that if you, you're a user and we have some clients that have really high volume invoices and they really don't want to have this preview tax and tax functionality, even though it's a sub second or maybe they're EDIing a bunch of invoices in, they really like the tax functionality to use the Avatax component, have these pieces available to them, but they want to be able to run bulk and batch uh, processing for that tax component off, you know, off not during the invoicing process. So there is actually a web interface that you can use that as you're going day to day, you can have these different pieces, but if you'd like batch processing for the uh, tax piece of it, so it's not taking up a day to day resources, you can run those batches anytime you want to uh, on an off period. Uh, so that'll be there. 
yeah, my remote server tied up. Looks like it's caught up to me uh, on that. And, uh, so Wendy, you're able to. Wendy, what? just a side note, we have uh, 10 more minutes. Okay, so are you good with time? Perfect. Okay. I'm good with time. I'm going to just show you kind of where it moves over into Avatax, and then we're going to hand it back for the COVID piece of it for Cameron to, to walk through those. All right. Excellent. Thank so you. So inside of Avatax, pull that up. You're telling Avatax, again, real time going back and forth from SAP B1 into Avatax. You'll have, as you come on board, an Avatax system. You're telling Avatax where you collect tax. You would also tell Avatax about your return information, and then we're going to have all of the transactional information that's here as well. So all of those details are being stored as well inside of Avatax, which means when the reporting comes time, when compliance is here, all of those details are very tidy in one place on your documentation. So we can see the transactions that come through, exactly the items that they were, the codes that were passed through, the jurisdiction levels, all the names of them and the rates, also kind of the logic. Did you have Nexus here? Was this customer taxable? Was the good or service taxable? And a full review of all of those details if there's ever a question on that taxability piece. And then extensive reporting, very elaborate details that you can have here um, to help you do reconciliation into uh, with your SAP, with your GL, also for liability reporting, for returns, for comparing all those different pieces of it. So it really is um, a, a very similar looking experience when you're in SAP B1, but there's a lot more power behind the scenes and the tracking and reporting. And again, that accuracy guarantee that, um, that's kicking off all of those pieces behind the scenes as well. And that's uh, really just a high uh, overview around it. I can get, um, can talk very excitedly about, <laughs> about uh, these different tax concepts. Um, so that is super high level uh, on that, but we're gonna um, jump back and forth and see if there are any questions at the end. And I think uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about just the uh, immediate environment with COVID-19 impacting some of the sales tax compliant, uh, compliance requirements that are happening right now for folks. Yeah, that's great. Th thank you, Wendy. I love how that fits so comfortably with inside uh, SAP B1, uh, it really looks great. I appreciate you going through that. And I know that you can, that's just the tip of the iceberg for you. So I appreciate you sharing some of that. Um, I know we're getting towards the, the top of the hour here, so I won't take too much more time, but uh, you know, to say 2020 has thrown a lot of people uh, for a loop to start uh, was, was probably a major understatement. Uh, I think there was a lot of kind of scrambling at first to course correct and figure out what's going on. Um, wanted to touch briefly on some of the efforts that states and the federal government have made uh, as far as accommodations to try to help people and really kind of, for the first time I feel, kind of just be flexible to, to the environment and, and really showing kind of how everyone is in the, in the same storm, even though we may be in different boats. But um, so for individuals and for businesses, uh, the tax date has moved from April 15th to July 15th. I remember beginning the year thinking, oh my gosh, taxes are going to be due. They moved it. And now I'm again going, oh my gosh, taxes are going to be, going to be due uh, <laughs> next month. This, uh, the year has uh, definitely is flying by. Um, and so for that movement from April 15th to July 15th, there are no uh, late fees, of course, or any penalties incurred. Uh, you can see there for individuals, some of the deferred amounts, and then also for businesses to help, uh, you know, kind of, again, just get acclimated to the new, uh, the new norm, the new environment of 2020 and things going on. Um, and then, of course, I'm sure we've all been um, seen on the news as far as uh, the Federal Reserve just flashing interest rates close to zero to try to get people out there and, and really help out. So uh, maybe some of the state specific stuff, if you want to take a look here at some of them adopting as far as the July 15th deadline, I, I think this has become even uh, a larger scale. I know Texas uh, agreed uh, a few months back to do it as well. I'm pretty sure by now all the states are on board with uh, the July 15th filing deadline. Um, maybe if we look a little bit more specific, uh, next slide, uh, please, Wendy, on some of the, the different ones here. Just a couple standouts for me are Alabama and Louisiana, just really saying, look, we're going to go ahead and any of the late payment penalties, any interesting like that, we're going to go ahead and waive it until further notice. Um, you know, let's 
let's all get in this together. We'll get through it together and, and really just being flexible and, and helping individuals uh, and also businesses out to, to make sure that we're all uh, doing our part. Um, all right, next slide. So a couple of noteworthy folks or, or states that have uh, kind of go, gone above and beyond. So uh, the County of Vail, Colorado has said that they will absolutely just suspend any sales tax collection until further notice. Um, they just want to use, uh, you know, leverage that to help folks uh, really just induce their cash into uh, the flow of their business, try to help them out to either, uh, you know, tr figure out how to thrive or, or survive and and really get back to uh, business as, as usual if we can. And then uh, Puerto Rico just saying, look, any kind of products related to uh, COVID-19, uh, we're going to go ahead uh, and, and um, you know, make those exempt from any sales or use tax. So a lot of different folks coming on board. Um, I bet any time you want to do some independent research on your own, um, if you go to the next slide, Wendy, we do have resources that are available all the time um, uh, via our website, blogs, different things at avalera.com. Um, our folks are really working hard to stay up to the minute to bring you the resources to have at your fingertips. And, and of course, we'd love to have any further conversation, um, even if it's just learning about your business and answering some of the questions that you have. So uh, the uh, American Institute of Certified Public Accountants as well has some guidance on um, the state filings for coronavirus. Uh, and then again, at any time, you can visit avalera.com or reach out to the group at Pioneer Beer B1 and let them know that you have a, some interest based on what you saw today or your environment to have a, a little deeper conversation. And of course, Wendy, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll go in length if you wanna see um, really kind of uh, a deep dive into, uh, into our solution set. So um, that's really what I had for us today. And I know Wendy, uh, I appreciate you doing your piece as well. Um, I will go ahead and adjourn and uh, turn it over to uh, the group at Pioneer B1. Um, I think that there's some some extra stuff there maybe in closing for, for the folks. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Cameron and uh, Wendy. Uh, I, I just want to quickly kind of summarize what we talked today and then share some of the, um, the you know, uh, reference that we have. So we did talk about sales tax codes in SAP out of the box. Uh, then we talked about, you know, the out of the box tax determination and how we can automate that. We talked about this tax as a service uh, option uh, and the reports available uh, through SAP Business One. Um, I think Cameron and, and Wendy did a great job in presenting Gavalara. And I would say when you have a very simple tax code situation, you know, SAP out of the box may be a fit. Where you may need a Valera is really when you want their help in, you know, report filing. SAP does not do that for you. Um, the compliance, you know, when you have many tax rules and things of that nature, this is really where you need to have the Avalara or Avatax uh, extension. Um, and I'm happy to adjourn here with our documentation. So this is the SAP documentation. It will be available here with this presentation that we'll share. That will take you directly to the uh, documentation on everything we talked about SAP out of the box. Uh, we have our YouTube channel where we have a lot of education and all our monthly webinars are sitting there. Uh, we have our uh, you know LinkedIn uh, page tips and tri tricks groups that provide you information about so many different things and of course our website from the Avalara site uh, we shared two links uh, the one is about SAP business one specifics and what it does and you know kind of get started or uh, get in touch with them and of course Google has a lot of uh, information good and bad <laughs> So with that being said, um, if you guys have any questions, we're going to open the lines or the chat is available. Um, our information is also here available. So feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any further questions or would like to, you know, to talk maybe in more details about the XI taxes or things that are more advanced, we would be happy to, to assist you with that. So any questions? All right, I don't see also anything on the chat. So with that being said, happy Friday, everyone. Have a great weekend. Really appreciate our presenters here and um, be safe and be healthy. Thank you for our audience on Facebook Live as well.
um, and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so care. much. Be safe. Enjoy. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye.